So let's say you're looking for air cooling for your build and you don't want to go all the way to the Noctua NHD 15, but you don't want to step all the way down to like a Hyper 212 Evo or something like that. Well, Noctua has got you covered somewhere in the middle ground here with the NHU series, NHU 12S and the NHU 14S. Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I am Chris as always and like I said today we're taking a look at kind of the middle ground on the cooling situation here from Noctua. Having taken a look at the big beefy monster that is the Noctua NHD 15, it's time to scale it back just a little bit and go with their uh, NHU series. So they've got, like I said, the NHU 12S and NHU 14S. So these are single tower coolers with one fan but with the option to mount two. And they make them in the uh, 12, so that's 120 millimeter, and the 14 for the 140 millimeter versions of these. Now, the reason they have two different versions is depending on what kind of build you're doing and how much room you have, you'll have to select the one that's most appropriate for fitting inside of your case. Now, for the NHU 12S, I've actually already used this cooler, so you may have seen it in action before if you watched my video for the review of the NZXT S340 case because I did a build in that case and I used this particular cooler because it fit very nicely. So go ahead and click the link that'll be up in the screen now or down in the description if you want to check that out because at the end of the video uh, you can see this cooler in action. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out of the mix because it's pretty much the exact same thing as the 14, just smaller. So what we'll do is take a look at the NHU 14S and keeping in mind that it's pretty much the exact same thing as the 12S and we'll go ahead and unbox it, see everything that comes in here, take a look at the cooler itself, the included fan and all the goodies and the goodie box that come with the Noctua coolers including the uh, paste and little extra brackets and things like that and then stick it in my Z97 4790K build because I've done so many cooling benchmarks on that particular system that it will give me a uh, a nice baseline to be able to check this out. I'll be able to compare this particular cooler against the NHD15 as well as the uh, NZXT Kraken X41 and X61. So we'll kind of see where this one lands in the mix. Okay, so first off, taking a look at the box, you can see that it's pretty much what you would expect from Noctua. They tend to stick to the same design scheme on most of their products, which is nice because if you're in a retail location, you can spot them very easily. So it does run through all of the features on the front here as well as along the top. And uh, that includes full RAM compatibility for LGA 2011, reasonable size for better overall compatibility. It includes a Noctua NFA15 PWM fan and it has that PWM support, but if you don't have a four pin connector, it does include a low noise adapter for those three pin people out there. And uh, it's compatible with past and future sockets. So I think they're getting at LGA 2011-3 there with that one. Uh, and then of course you have all of your 11.5X support as well as AMD, um, all the way from uh, you know the usual FM2, FM2+, plus, you know, the uh, AM3+, plus, you know, all the usual stuff. AMD's got so many. And then you do get the uh, NTH1 thermal compound and a six-year warranty. Spinning it around to the other side, you can see that it does include the exact specifications for this fan. Or this cooler, that is. I'm sure the fan's on there, too. And then on this side, man, you are just inundated with information over here. So this kind of, uh, if I take a look at it myself here, uh, it goes through pretty much all of the details on the RAM compatibility, the sizing, and, you know, everything I listed at, at the top, as well as um, the anti-vibration clips that are on the fan, the mounting firm, or Sec SecuFirm 2 kit that it uses, and then the compatibility with all the sockets. So, and then if you really want to get uh, international, you can take a look at this side and you've got all of your different languages. Okay, with that out of the way, it's time to get this thing out of the box and take a look at what comes in here. So let's pop the little tab in the back. One of the things I always appreciate about uh, Noctua products is they're always packaged really, really nicely. So you open it up and right away you can see that you get everything in a nice organized, laid out fashion. So that's always good to see. So taking them out one at a time, you do have the SecuFirm two mounting system on this, which is the same that comes with many of their other coolers as well, which I really enjoy. It's very easy to work with. So there's your AMD, and then there is your Intel. And then you have your accessories box, so that's good. And you can see that it says on here that you get the little screwdriver, the compound, the extra clip, uh, another little clippy thing. This is probably the rubber, uh, 
noise or vibration dampening thing and then your low noise adapter. So pop that open just to verify all of that. Yep, sure enough, there's your rubber anti-vibration, your thermal compound, a little bit more rubber stuff it looks like, and then the uh, screwdriver for screwing everything in. So it's never a surprise when I open up a, uh, an Octave cooler anymore. They're all pretty much the same as far as that top area is concerned, which is nice for consistency's sake. And digging in a little bit further, you can see now that this is the, the main vent right here. So right up top is that NFA15 fan. Now this thing is uh, very heavy, I will say, so prepare yourself for that. So let's go ahead and see how do we do this. There's always a way. There's always a certain way. Flip the doors open here. And we'll slide it out, there we go. So much noise. All right, then we'll remove it. Being careful because these fins can be sharp. So you can see immediately you have lots and lots of heat piping going on here. You've got, uh, it looks like four of them coming out to uh, the tower. So you've got two coming out to the, uh, to the big tower, two coming out to the internal tower, and then you've got an additional two going in to the inside area of the uh, cooler itself which you can kind of see by holding it this way. But yes, there's lots and lots of heat pipage going on here, which is good. And then you have the nice solid block on the bottom, which is very shiny. Look at that, very shiny. You can kind of see the reflection of everything. And like I said, this does have some good weight to it. This is not a, uh, even though it's designed to have uh, better compatibility with fitting into systems, it's by no means small. So keep that in mind. This is why I didn't use this in the S340 build because it was just going to be uh, a little bit on the large size for that. So you can see there is the NFA15 fan right up front. And then taking a look at the top, you can see that's where all the heat pipes exit out. So there are quite a few running through there, uh, six in total running in a uh, U pattern going through the block and coming out both sides. So you can unclip the fan, so I'll do that now. So now we have just the tower exposed and uh, it's a very, like I said, even with the fan off, this has still got some good heft to it. You can see here you've got your screws on both sides for the SecuFirm 2 mounting system. So that's always good. And then as far as the fan is concerned, if you've ever seen one of these before, you've seen it a hundred times, but you do get the rubber anti-vibration on the end. And then uh, you have your little short cable here to make the run, the PWM4 pin to your motherboard header but all in all, nothing surprising here. Nothing that I haven't seen before, but you do get the extra clip. So if you have another NFA15 fan, you can go ahead and put it on the other side and turn this into a push-pull configuration. With that fun out of the way, it's time to take this beast and slap it on my 4790K chip. And we're gonna pit it up against another air cooler going with the Monster NHD15. And then we're also gonna see how it fares against some liquid cooling with the NZXT Kraken X41 and Kraken X61. All right, so the benchmark results are in. I did the temperature testing and everything was pretty much what I expected. I've got the chart up on my screen right here. So I went ahead and put the NHU14S into my 4790K build that I've been using for many of the other temperature tests that I've been doing. So I already had the numbers for that. So I adjusted everything to the ambient of 78 degrees that I use on all of the uh, temperature tests because that's what it was when I did the majority of them and uh, kind of took a look at the numbers, and not surprising, things were pretty much what I expected. So let's take a look. All right, well, as you can see, the Noctua NHD15 was the king when it came to the air coolers, and, uh, you know, was only bested by the liquid cooling with the uh, Kraken X41 and X61, of course, coming in, uh, with doing a little bit better because that would be expected considering that they're liquid coolers. And the poor NHU14S came in last place, hitting 90 in Prime 95, 64 in Valley and 37 at idle. However, those still aren't bad numbers because this cooler has a lot of things going for it that make it uh, a lot more convenient than the uh, NHD15. And that is the fact that it's a single tower. So the fan, if you put your RAM in the outer two banks and you only have two sticks, does not get in the way of your memory. So you don't have that outer fan having to be bumped up if you've got tall memory like I do. Uh, which is really nice. So you've got a little bit of space between your memory and where the actual fan 
lands if you're doing a push configuration going out the back of the case. Installation was easy as it always is with the SecuFirm 2 hardware. I just, I love that mounting system. It's my favorite one. And I'm so glad that Noctua has been sticking with it for so long because it works and it works well. So of the numbers, it's not the best. It came in last place but it still didn't do a bad job considering that I was on a 4.6 gigahertz overclock using adaptive voltage, which I know makes everybody cringe because it was bumping up to 1.377 volts uh, when it was hitting the 4.6, especially in prime 95 with uh, large in place FFTs or whatever the heck it's called. The one that doesn't make your processor completely melt down. So that being said, uh, for 60, I believe it's 69.99 US, about $70. I think it's a, it's a pretty good choice, especially if you've got a case that has enough room. It, it's very quiet, especially at idle. It never got loud, even when I was doing Prime 95s. Matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the case fans got louder than the fan did on the CPU cooler. So, I mean, really, it's, it would, it's what you would expect from an Octo cooler. It's nice and quiet, it gets the job done, and uh, I have to say, once again, I know I'm a fanboy, but I'm impressed. So if you enjoyed this video and you're not sick of cooling videos yet, which uh, I kind of am, I'm, I think I've got a few more fans review from Noctua and then I'm going to cool it with the cooling for a while, which at least I'm thankful for. But if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. That always helps me out. You can also follow me on Twitter, tweet tweet, over at Tech Uploaded. And of course I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash tech uploaded. And then finally, if you have a question or a comment or you just want to shoot me some kind of fun message, you can do that on the Gmail over at techuploaded at gmail.com. And you know the drill. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.